I feel like the only aspect to me that is surprising is that we knew that Dreams was not in a good spot for a long time. And so there was kind of two paths I think that they could have taken. They could do this and kind of let it die and keep it maintained in in some fashion, but move on. Or they would need to basically kind of relaunch the game, have it make sure it works on PlayStation 5, get a PC version going. And I think most importantly, the thing that we've talked about so many times on this show is an export feature. Figure out a way for people that have dedicated the time in, into pouring stuff into this product development or this game development tool to be able to make a game or something. And obviously doing those things that I just mentioned would be a lot of work and a lot of money. And I'm sure that Sony was looking at this and thought, well, it's, it's time to just move on. I mean, it feels like we've seen the writing on the walls for this for a while uh at this point so i I mean my the only thing that comes to mind is all right so media molecule is presumably moving on to do something else but also part of me is like what could they possibly do now because so many of the people arguably responsible for making you know little big planet and 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 the games at media molecule are probably gone by now so like my, my my curiosity is with the next media molecule, whatever project game, how much of like how media molecule will it be? This is just mismanaged time and mismanaged resources at a time where Sony doesn't necessitate a difference maker because their games all seem to sell fairly well, even though they're often talked about as being exactly the same in terms of aesthetic or style. In some ways, you know, the third person over the shoulder sort of thing. But Media Molecule, what made them special and what made Sony acquire them to begin with after Little Big Planet's success and when they began developing Little Big Planet 2 was to differentiate themselves from other studios that they had purchased around the same time. You know, around that same time, Sony also buys Gorilla, Sony also buys Sucker Punch, Sony also buys um, Evolution, which they later shut down. And these things need a differentiator. And I think Media Molecule was just taken off the board for no perceived reason for a really long time over this very ill-conceived thing. And it's kind of haunting because why would you let them do that? I mean, if you think about Little Big Planet 2 coming out in 2011 and in early 2011, and then just going all of that time, think of all of the games that came out since Little Big Planet 2 came out, say from Naughty Dog. Since Little Big Planet 2 came out, Naughty Dog released Uncharted 3, The Last of Us, Uncharted 4, The Lost Legacy, The Last of Us Part 2, and they will have released Factions, no doubt, by the time Media Molecule releases another game. I'm not calling them, they're not apples to apples. Media Molecule is a much smaller team with a different charge. But the point is, is think about all of the production you could have gotten out of them if you didn't waste all of your time on this boondoggle. Dreams is a not is a bad idea. And you know how you know it's a bad idea? Because no one used it except for a small group of people. It never broke through. It was a bad idea. It was a bad idea to let them make it. It was a bad idea to let them work on it for so long. It was a bad idea that sunken cost fallacy through the roof for Dreams. I think it's widely believed that Dreams is an amazing product, but it doesn't make it a good idea. The numbers speak for themselves. I said back in the day when we first started or around the time we first started doing sacred symbols that you could start reading into dreams lack of success immediately because they they explicitly said they were going to limit early access in sales once it reached a certain sales threshold, which it never reached in one year. And so you could tell from the very beginning that they were overshooting and not understanding the product and they just. They just insisted. And. So we'll see what happens. I, I'll be very interested to know what goes on next for them. I'm glad. And I think it's essential that they stay with whimsy. They use the, the word joyful, which I think is good. I think we need some of that in PlayStation's ecosystem. It would be nice to have gotten. We could have gotten two or three media molecule bangers in the time that dreams has been percolating and out. So just a total. It's a, they wasted basically. I mean, if they're just spooling up now, they wasted basically two generations, if not more. Just straight up. I don't I don't understand whose idea that was, but 
a rare miss for PlayStation First Party, in my opinion. And I think Media Molecule is lucky that they were probably mismanaged so badly into the situation that they can't possibly be blamed for the outcome. Because <laughs> again, no one says Dreams is bad. It's just a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see what the audience has to say here. A lot of you wrote in. Jamin Fuller wrote in, said, Hey, CDC, with the recent news about Media Molecule ending support for Dreams, what are your thoughts for how the studio was able to weather this time to remain open at all? I feel like two generations ago, a situation like this would have shut the studio down, just like how Evolution Studios was closed. Do you think the demand for talent these days has a lot to do with them still being open? In other words, it would hurt Sony more to give up the talent than to close the studio. Do you think there is something we're missing about Media Molecule's involvement in PlayStation, maybe as a support studio? I'd love to hear your thoughts. No, I, I mean, I think common sense says that when you have BAFTA support in your home country, one of your, you know, Reddy herself is a BAFTA fellow like Miyamoto is a BAFTA fellow. So like once you become a BAFTA, and we went into that in recent episodes, like once you become a BAFTA fellow, it's a big deal. And I just think that that's just too much. I, I And I think they might not give a shit. I mean, that could be possible. I think that they might be like, whatever, man, this company doesn't cost us anything, basically. We're just keeping them live. It's kind of like a skunk work situation where they're just doing things. But I just, I feel like in a world of asset management, which is vital in video games, I don't understand why you would not want to put them on the board every three or four years with a new game. And it doesn't have to be Little Big Planet, and it shouldn't be Little Big Planet or Sackboy. I think that that probably has run its course and, it, and ironically run its course through the hands of other studios, mainly Sumo Digital. But I just think we need more of, of that, that special flair. And you're saying is that the retain, retain members of the staff, I'm not so sure how many people... Like Chris was saying, like, I don't know if anyone's even really left. I have no idea. I have to do. I'm too lazy to do it, to be honest with you. It's going to a lot of work, but you can do a pretty easy meta analysis by just going to Moby Games, going to Little Big Planet 2's credits, and then just cross referencing who's left. Or even going to Tearaway, although that was a smaller team, or going to Dreams. But I'm not sure that Dreams will even tell you the full story either. And then you can go to like LinkedIn and just tie those things together and do that. But I'm not doing that. Someone else can do it. So. My assumption is, is that this was done mostly because they are cheap to run and they have critical acclaim, even though yeah. they don't sell games. And clearly Dreams was a failure. And I think admitting Dreams was a failure quicker would have made the studio look worse. And I don't know, man, it's an interesting situation. 